it's just, it's just, it's just not. Maybe I need to restart. Probably, yeah, let's go ahead and restart. Okay. Just okay. If not, just throw it out the window. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's always the best option. Just chug it. <laughs> Can you say something in the microphone really quick? In this one? Hello. All right. Check, check. Yeah, but you know, Matt isn't going to be here, right? Wait, am I right about that? Yeah. So I think this is all you're going to do. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you for being here. You want to go get some water? See if it's a water fountain out there. Ask Miss ask June if it's a oh, water fountain. Start. Start. Yeah, we should. Trying to get online, you guys. Damn it. What is happening? Lori, is your stuff working? 
Can you come sit by me and pull up the thing? Um, good evening. It is six six oh four, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with today's is this feedback from you? Probably. Uh, we're gonna go go ahead and get started with today's second hearing. And um, as you can see, we've come up with uh, five sample maps based on various feedback that we received during the first hearing, both in person, online, as well as in the email inbox. So I want to stress that these are absolutely just samples, conversation pieces to get us started so that we can really get granular in terms of your feedback and how the district should be rearranged. So this is your first time seeing these, so I would encourage you to get up, move around the room and go and look at the big maps so that you can see the uh, boundaries, you can see the streets, you can see uh, where incumbents are, and you can see schools as well. So I would encourage you to take maybe the next 10 or 15 minutes just to kind of digest the different map ideas, and then we'll start uh, gathering your feedback, your initial impressions about them. So the um, shine from the election board is telling me that the red dot specifically on the map represents incumbents. And we also labeled the schools. So please get up, um, have a look at those big maps, you know, so that we can talk about um, the different variations.
Yeah, although I would make a change in that now, I would probably move this here. Because the population is off by over a thousand. Between these two. I would just take that. Thank <laughs> you. 
The second of November, not February. I was gonna say, oh, no, they through it. Okay. It's okay. So they through the three with them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If they're not thrown out already. Yeah. yeah. In case there's some additional submissions. Which there could be. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure there will. Be. All right, Eddie, your turn. Lead us into the this part of the discussion, and then I'll okay. turn back in. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to everybody this evening. Thank you uh, all for coming, and thanks to all who have joined us on Zoom. So this is our, in this rapid fire succession of uh, meetings, this is our second one. In our first meeting, that was last week, we focused primarily on the criteria that would be used to draw a map. We uh, heard comments from many citizens about factors that they thought would be important. Um, we heard about uh, crossing truced. We heard about uh, identifying where schools were and trying to draw districts that um, kind of created communities of, of, or that recognized communities of interest around schools. Uh, we heard a lot of different comments and so and they were not uh, materially different from the comments that we heard the last time we drew maps. So in the last several days, we got together and we have come up with five different maps. Now, um, I will tell you, these are some of these are here for illustration purposes only. And in particular, I want to identify scenario number two because every year we have a... Uh, request for, you know, trying to not follow some of the vertical lines that have defined Kansas City history, and to instead draw districts that uh, pull people together east to west. And so oftentimes, you know, you have a blank slate. The thought is, well, let's see what that looks like. Let's draw maps of 41,200 people or so, uh, that districts that go from east to west. And so Pretty much, uh, you know, there's not many ways you can do it once you're trying to draw precincts. Scenario two was an effort to do that. And you can look and see what that does uh, with uh, different uh, racial percentages and uh, probably socioeconomic. We don't have those on this chart. But you'll see that it, uh, it really kind of turns things around a little bit. I don't think, I, I hate to prejudge, but I would say that I don't think the consultants would support Scenario number two, no, but we want people to see what it looks like. Uh, a little other uh, discussion here. So scenario number one was just sort of a starter effort to uh, try to make the districts a little bit more compact uh, and to recognize the growth that has occurred disproportionately in some parts of the city uh, because we have to draw relatively equal districts that requires changes. So that's scenario number one. Two, we just covered, that's the stripes, east-west stripes. Scenario number three is really just yet another effort to uh, mix things up. What, what three does that none of the other maps do is it tries to take the old District 1 and uh, no longer have a long, skinny strip down the, down the west side of Kansas City. Um, because of where people live, it usually it, it has had extremely high percentage of white voters. And so this just changes things a little bit, and it takes the old one in five and, uh, and kind of redistributes them. So that's scenario number three. Scenario number four is what is yielded when you ask somebody to draw new maps and try to keep the current districts, if possible, and make you know only marginal adjustments to adjust for population differences. 
So scenario number four you might want to consider as the status quo. And then finally, scenario five is uh, sort of another take on the status quo, but uh, it's maybe a mix between the status quo and scenario number one. And you can look and see the, the uh, impact that has on the distribution of voters, at least by race. So that's a quick walk through these. We'd love to take comments on pros and cons on the scenarios. If you have, if you have come with your own scenario or your own ideas, now's the time to, to go ahead and tell us. And uh, I don't have any other background comments. Melissa? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to reiterate that these five maps are, five maps are strictly um, generated through just various points of discussion. Um, none, none of them are necessarily supported by uh, the consultant team, but we wanted to have like a, a jump off point that we could that we could talk about. And so, uh, of course, you're seeing these just now for the first time, so you might not have a whole lot to say, but especially if there's a map you particularly hate, um, speak now. I mean, we, we'd like to hear <laughs> which ones you just deplore. Um, so we can we can note that and then we can sort of work through um, how to make changes perhaps to a map that you think is a little bit better um, and as he mentioned we definitely want to see just straight up community maps that that don't have anything to do with any of these um, before the third hearing so that we have have enough time to come back to this room and and, and show those community maps and have people comment on them so yeah, just feel free to chime in, very informal, um, family oriented. Give us your feedback and your thoughts. And I'm gonna ask that everyone go to the microphone at the podium so that the viewers can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's also comment cards out in the hallway. So if you don't wanna necessarily get on the mic and get up in front of people, you can certainly write your comments on the card and leave it with us. Um, or, or submit your comments at the email address. So just, so just introduce yourself and go ahead and give your comments yeah. about the five scenarios. Greetings, Greetings. this Greetings. evening. My name is Spark Bookhart, representing the Parent Power Lab. And actually I have before, um, comments I had a couple questions for the consulting group and I understand that we went through this exercise um, just a little over two, two years maybe two years ago is it and my question for the consulting group is what was the response or the reaction to the map that you settled on um, last time was the reception um, you know because we lost districts, lost seats, the whole things, and we had to do a lot of work to settle on a map, just trying to get a reasonable idea of um, the reaction to the map that you settled on from you guys' perspective. Um, yeah, sure, I can speak to that. Um, the, the map that we ended up settling on was, it, the reception was mixed, mm -hmm. you know, to be candid. And the reason it was mixed was because, uh, from my recollection, we had, we had those maps available to the public and we sort of had a con consensus. We did like um, note cards where you could just say, what was your favorite map? And so we did have a numer at least a numerical consensus from the people that um, attended. But then there was a community map that was presented right when we were headed to board meeting that seemed to have a lot of favorability that didn't have a chance to be Put up, put in front Let of the it. public, mm -hmm. and so this time we tried to correct for that by saying, "Okay, all community maps, please make sure you have them so that we can present them and they can, and it could be transparent." Um, so, so yeah. In summary, I think it was mixed. I mean, the map that the election board ended up adopting certainly has support, but then we had a later community map that also has support too. Okay, and did that? Um, I, I'm not familiar with that community map, but did that community 
did that community since we didn't have a whole lot of movement um, mm -hmm. between this last map and this map? Did that community map? Um, um, did that community map survive, and is it represented here today? No, no. And the reason, and, and so I'm, I'm actually in touch with the folks that built that community map. Some mm -hmm. of them, not all. Um, but the reason why that community map probably wouldn't work this time, and I really don't think it will, is because we were dealing with the the eight year old census data because the legislator was forcing us to redistrict out of a census year, mm -hmm. and so we were really operating off false data. Mm -hmm. And so now we have the more accurate data. And I think just maybe for a, for a science fair exercise, that community map could be looked at and see how much it, how much it overlaps Adjusted. with the current data. But now you just have totally different data. Like we knew intuitively that downtown had changed tremendously, that you know, Armor Boulevard in that area over there on Truce had changed tremendously. We knew there were hundreds of new residents, but we didn't have any data to substantiate that. So we had to use that very old census data. So my guesstimation is that that old map represents 10 years ago gotcha. and you shouldn't use it. Yeah, that's it. That helps. Um, that actually um, helps formulate some of my, my thinking on that. So I'll just uh, step, step, step back and most likely be back up uh, as okay. I... Hello, everyone. Um, these are just some initial thoughts, um, just seeing the maps. Um, first, thank you for taking the time to start with, you know, just a map so we can have some visual representations. My name is Kokethia Hill, uh, representing Black KC. I want to start with map scenario three, because you said start with one that we just don't like besides the east to west, which we're not going <laughs> to include. So um, map three, what I'll start with what I what some concerns. I appreciate trying to have diversity within subdistrict one. My worry if we don't look at um, income, medium income, is that uh, lower income folks that live uh, east of Truce, their population size it might be diluted in their vote because you have more affluent people who, I'm just making some generalizations, right, who are more likely to have jobs that support them getting off to vote and more uh, aware here. And this might be a working class that may not have an opportunity to get off at the right time and vote. We can go on and on, but I just think uh, sometimes when we think about cross and choose, we just need to um, think about uh, the income differences and those who have uh, more resources. And not only that, but in terms of being able to run and have representation, it costs a lot of money to run for an election. And so if you are coming from a lower income census tract and you're running against an opponent that's in an affluent area, it makes it extremely difficult. So uh, I would like to see five go back to status quo, I think is what you guys call it on the map. Um, my other concern is Subdistrict 2. Um, Subdistrict 2, we talk a lot about that was where you saw a lot of growth and it would be super helpful in the next one just to have a map. You might have it up of the, the current map and then the, t the totals in which who grew more than the target number. So like there was the, the first map we got last week or the last time we met, right, it said, hey, subdistrict one, here's the population, and it is 2,000 over our target number, or something like that. Oh, the, so growth, we, the growth number. The growth okay. number, yeah, okay. sorry. So what happens is, like, I'm wondering, so the question that I have is, oh, two needed to shrink, and it is more compact, but it becomes increasingly more white. So I'm, I'm just wondering, right, when you look at subdistrict two, and I see uh, 5,000 African Americans compared to 20,000. I mean, that just might be I'm in the over 18 category. But I'm wondering, is there a way we can make that a little bit more diverse? I'm just looking at the over 18 counts. And one way I think that can happen is that you have a map four, you have uh, subdistrict three coming down. And so if, if subdistrict two can have a. Um, uh, 
maybe stop around Admiral, I think that you'll start to see if that is the western boundary of Admiral, you, you will see a more diverse sub-district too. That's just a theory that I have. I so, don't know. around Admiral, is that like Columbus Park? Is that like... Yeah, yeah he'll be able to see exactly which street. Okay, go ahead, please. Um, I, I like... Um, I think sub district four on scenario three. I'm going back sub district four. Uh, minimal change on that, but I do think if I know when you adjust boundaries on one, it's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. But I think if you can uh, bring sub district one over to truce just to see how that looks, because one will need to increase if you take five back. I know that might not make sense for a lot of other people that are watching virtually, but five on scenario three has shifted over across truths. So if you were to shift that back, then that means you have to add population to sub-district one. And what I'm saying is possibly taking that eastern boundary which stops right now at Gillum, what happens if you move that over to truths? Or you know, what does that look like? Would that add the population back? Um, I mean, those are just the initial ones. I, I want to spend some time with the map, but I, I did want to say uh, what map I did not like. I don't like five in uh, scenario three. I do not like sub-district two in scenario one. Um, so you don't like three. I mean, you have some, you use your comments for three. Which one you say you didn't? So if I were, so... If I were to look at scenario four, I don't even know, I don't have an astro. I had to look at the uh, original map. Sub-district so, one, four. scenario four, sub-district one, I mean sub-district three. That's at the top in green, looks good. It comes down over here, that's a better three. Oh. And, and scenario four is almost identical to our current map. <laughs> that it's might be why as, I like it. How does that is quality? Yeah. As yeah. little changes as possible is four. Yeah. So you can see what it looks like. Yeah. I, I think uh, I think that is one and two looks pretty good. I think we can, I know at the time when we looked at the current map and the growth totals, I believe sub-district, I'll show one, four, and five needed to increase. Am I right? Four, five, Four, five and one needed to increase in terms of size of people from the current map. That's true, yes. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm saying that sub-district three looks good. If sub-district two needed to decrease, it looked like you guys have done that. But I'm wondering what would happen if you uh, looked at the intersection between subdistrict. I'm looking on scenario four, subdistrict one, five, subdistrict one and four on that Gillum to Truce. What does that do to the population totals? And then can you pick it up if five needed to gain? Because four, you know, will, four will lose some. Can you bring that up to Blue Parkway and five? Those are just things I'm thinking about. Okay, now I just want to make sure I'm, I understand. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the appendage of four uh, in scenario four, is that what you want to give to one? Yeah, I'm wondering, can one come over to Gillum? Mm -hmm. Okay, just to Gillum. Yes, if okay. it can come over and extend to Gillum. I'm not sure if that means, oh, well, that means one. You know, it's a domino effect, so I don't know if adding that means that we have to remove somewhere else, which it likely might mean we have to. If so, then I'm looking at, can you remove uh, armor? I'm going back to the pink district, which is two. two, it's two, the number's down on here, two. Can that go back to the original boundaries? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, in, yeah. yes. Oh, okay. You see? Okay, so, give them and give that little bit right there across armor. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that uh, might change four. It might not. But if it were to mean that four uh, needed to 
lose or gain some because it gave the Gillum back, then I think a great place to think about that is that Swope Parkway boundary coming over to Volker. That's just some thoughts. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that was probably clear as mud, but. No, um, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So to summarize, it sounds like four for you is okay. Let's try to make some more tweaks. Yes. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I, I too uh, think that, that um, scenario four is the best. Um, okay. I, uh, my name is Linwood Tawheed. I'm uh, not representing anyone, I'm drawing maps. And uh, I'm looking at, at, at four, and I think, you know, this is, of course, the map that is the closest to the current configuration. Um, and so it makes me wonder, at least on the large map, um, why the numbers for the districts were rearranged. Um, district one, in the current situation, is, uh, is where it has been over in the uh, oh, uh, I don't know why they have southeast, mm -hmm. southwest. District two and three, uh, at least the numbers are, are exchanged, and district four and five are exchanged. Colors instead of geography. Okay, and so and so when you look at that and you start to look at the demographics for the district that you're in, you'll get a different you'll get a different scenario. And 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 I can't think of any reason that you would do that, so I suggest that you you change those back to where they are so they, so they don't ca cause confusion for voters. Okay, that wasn't, voters. In, that wasn't intentional, Mr. Tahi. Okay, we'll no, I'm not saying back. it's intentional. I'm just saying, I'm just asking a question. Although just, I, no, you just pointed out to me. So I don't see this. Is this on, dis on District no. 4, is Scenario it, uh, 4? Is it, yeah. is it, is it wrong the on the big one? map? Yes. It okay. should be the, the, the northern district should still be three, even if it's green. I mean, they just changed the colors. It's, I'm sorry. That's but, but, I'm, but I'm looking at, uh, for example, the, oh. the, the percentage. The African American percentage in District Three, and that's at forty-three point seven one percent. And I actually think that's the African American percentage in District Two. Yeah. Okay. So, well, now, now the stripe one, we can forget that. That one's all different. No, no, I'm not talking. Yeah, about you that. mean Scenario Four? I think scenario you're right. Scenario Four. I think that uh, the Hispanic district becomes somehow got renumbered as District Two instead of District Three. Right. But I think if you just invert those two. No, you have to invert four and five as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. See, my map doesn't have labels. I, I can't <laughs> see as far as yeah, over the, there. Yeah, the small maps don't have labels. The large map does. Okay, okay, good to know. Well, that, that is interesting. Okay, and okay. Uh, again, Thank I... Thank you for letting us know. You're, 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 no problem. And the, the comments that uh, were made in terms of uh, four, I think, being the, the, the best out of the group. Okay. Two of them, of course, are, are just red herrings. Well, maybe not. I won't, I won't say it that way. So I'll say they were put there because, you know, everybody asked, so you put them out there. Okay. They did. Yeah. And, and I think uh, very, various comments about the uh, so dilution of socioeconomic um, uh, communities of interest is, is very um, uh, important in that. Um, again, I support four. So can you, if you, if you can, can you look at five and tell me just, uh, just kind of cursory four and five, what are kind of some of the weaknesses you feel about five? Because just, just from your point of view. Well, I think a weakness that I see in five is that you're disconnecting um, Hispanic voters who are over in the uh, western part of District 2 from Hispanic voters in, in, the, um, in District 3. And okay. in order, when you do that, of course, then you, you need to you have to push that district three further north, which uh, which goes into territories that are in in district four. Um, that that might be okay for for uh, a community of interest in district four, but when you do that, I think you you have to jostle west some more. Okay. Um, um, and um, of course, in 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 all of the viable scenarios, district one remains relatively the same. I think you should do that with District 3 as well. Okay. Uh, because actually there's only about one precinct that you would need to change in District 3 to, 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 to reach your numbers. You know, and, one, and one precinct in District 1, so, so, so why, why, why make a drastic change? Uh, here's, there's something in there, District, um, the, the Precinct 216, 
which is up at the uh, oh, yeah, the, the right. tip. Yeah, it seems to not be uh, assigned, so that's that's maybe an error there. Well, I think there's no one who lives there. That's prob well, that, yeah, probably well, yeah, probably is the case. If you look at the data for that, it's uh, it's sort of an interchange, and I think yeah. no one actually lives in that spot. Okay. Yeah. That that probably is the case. I, I would imagine that uh, in a in a in a real map, you have to take account of all the precincts and include them in your map, even if there's because there are a couple of other precincts that we have zero voters, mm -hmm. zero persons as well. That spots free parking on the map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's my that's my look at at, at uh, scenario five. You know, one comment that I'll make that you uh, drew to my attention. If you if you were to focus on the um, Hispanic percentage over 18 in these different maps. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that the map that has the highest percentage or the maps with the highest percentage for Hispanic vote mm -hmm. no longer loop around to pick up the area over on the west side. Mm -hmm. And if you were to actually look at the precinct mm -hmm. uh, data, uh, what's interesting is that there's been a loss of population right. sure. in that area, but there's been a boom in Hispanic population mm -hmm. In the area around, I don't know, Jackson and Truman and and over there, and so even though you lose that historically mm -hmm. uh, Hispanic area on the west side, mm -hmm. if you give up that territory and move three more down into the Jackson Truman 12th Ninth Street area, mm -hmm. uh, sort of counterintuitively, you actually pick up a higher percentage of Hispanic population. Yeah, I agree. I agree that the numbers show that, sir. Uh, well, the, the comment was that, that that might weaken the black vote in the fourth, and it and it and it doesn't do that, but it does weaken the black vote in the in the second, okay. right? And and the second has a uh, significant number of African American voters, uh, giving them a stake in District Two, that moving the district uh, towards the, uh, the the line actually diminishes. So I, w I would say that that also is a dilution of voting. For, uh, for African Americans, but not in District 4, it's in District 2. Thank okay. you, that was illuminating. Okay, thank you. Park Book Card again, Parent Power Lab. Um, outside of the confusion of the <laughs> of the confusion of the 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 actual numbers and the consistency across the maps, I also wanted to um, just add our language a little bit, like um, the language of status quo map. Um, I think is a little harmful. And I say it's harmful because status quo, as it relates to schools and school district, has is is loaded um, is loaded with a lot of con um, coded language. So I was just wanting to um, raise that. And it's hard to say that a map that was created just two years ago is a status quo map. I mean, it's pretty much a new map. So uh, I just wanted to make mention of that. How should we? What should we call? I'm closest to the current map, <laughs> closest to the current map, uh, I, I think, because I, I just think that uh, that that language just okay. has a lot of connotate, uh, additional connotation um, to it. Um, but yeah, I was over there confused. I'm glad Dr. Tahit raised it because I was over there confused about moving back and forth between maps when the districts and the district numbers were were changing. So. If that could be something that could be fixed so that we can kind of look, compare, um, compare um, apples to apples in a sense across the map, that would be, across the maps, that would be um, easier. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, <clears throat> and in a, in a, um, total population of about 206 or 7,000 um, people and having to have a net movement of 
I don't know, three or four thousand people at most is a very min it's very minuscule movement. Mm -hmm. And that minuscule movement um, um, suggests that um, maybe you guys got it right or close to right last time you did the map. So just credit to credit to your work from before. Oh. So I just wanted to say, um, to just put it out there, city planning is doing both the city council process and this process. So in terms of the numbering and the colors, I just want to give some grace that they are super busy in, in lending us a demographer in a really busy time. So we'll definitely um, ask them to make it consistent and, and fix those colors and numbering. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. A flip on the data in the charts. There is. There is. Okay. So if um, if we were to narrow, so our task today, or at least before the next meeting, is to narrow to three. Um, and then accept any community maps. If we were to try to narrow to three today, or even narrow to two, I mean, we don't have to stay with three. Um, if we were to narrow to, to, to less than five, let me say that. Um, it sounds like four is a definite yes, let's keep talking about that one, let's keep tweaking that one and, and, and trying to make it better. So it sounds like four gets to stay. Um, is there another one that we'd like to to have stay um, if we're trying to get to three. And like I said, we it's not mandatory that we have three, but just the consensus in the room, if there's one or two more that we want to keep in the conversation, what would those be? I know. Four is the one that, we, that most people think. I think just some small tweaking from your existing map. I mean, when you think about maybe only having to shift 3,000 people, what does that look like to make minimal change to that map in addition to four? Oh, okay. uh, I think we'll probably be better than doing something radically different to try to make the numbers. Just okay. A suggestion. Okay. So keeping four and then going back to the original map and seeing if there's even a different way to make minimal changes. Okay. Um, So, go ahead. You should just stay up here. Sorry, I, I just want to <laughs> benefit. I've been on the other side of a Zoom call, and yeah. it's just um, uh, quite confusing when somebody's talking and not near the mic. So I want to um, be cognizant of people that's not here, um, physically present. Um, but my question was regarding um, community uh, maps. And I want to... Um, get an idea from you guys, if a community map, um, when a community map is submitted and the committee does their vetting um, um, on that community map, <clears throat> will, that, will that vetting process um, include um, the final product being on par with the rest of the maps? Um, so will city planning do that vetting, your demographers do that vetting and present the map um, alongside um, equitably um, of all the rest of the maps, how 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 should we look at the community vetting process and I, the pre yeah. and the presentation of the community maps? I think I think it depends in large part on uh, the number that we get, given that we've got limited resources. So if we were to get uh, community maps that look like the stripe map, you know, we may not ask, and we have a whole lot of maps and limited resources, we may not ask city planning to do a, a full rundown on that because they've got to then go through all the data and, and create this. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I, at the end of the day, we're going to have to make some recommendations to the commissioners. And I, I, don't, I, I think the community map should be on par. I mean, we ought to be able to see what the data is. Um, and uh, we ought to be able to pass on them ourselves. 
But, you know, I'll also say this. We're kind of getting to the point where <laughs> there's only so much you can do. You know, the, the maps are converging a little bit here. And so some of those maps may be very, very similar to, one, to each other. And, that, and that, that, that's exactly why I raised my question, because I wanted to get an idea. And it sounds like you're confirming this, that a community map that may be um, similar, similar to an existing map it would it would not from your position get the same treatment no. as on your existing map. I, I I don't want to suggest that. In fact, what here's what might happen: we might find that we're converging around a, a basic idea, a basic principle, and yeah, and it comes down to whether a certain precinct gets moved or not. Um, in which case, we're gonna you know, if we're down to five mild variations on the same thing, I think and a few more community maps, so be it. Correct. We'll look at the data. We'll need to. We better make sure that that district, that that precinct that's being moved, you know, that it, the population works out, and uh, the commissioners who make a decision are going to want to know the data. Right. So I just hope that we've got the the resources at the very generous city to be able to go in and do this. Well, that, that's why I asked. I just wanted to get an idea of how the community maps will be treated. Yeah, they're not presumptively more or less than anything else. That there's no presumption. It's just that if we get something that clearly, like the stripe map, we may not burden them with going up and seeing, you know, what that looks like and, and how far off it is. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say we've already burdened them by producing that map, <laughs> that map already. <laughs> right. right. So, hold on, Mr. Bookhart. Uh -huh. um, historically, when the community created a map, they created a map so they you know gave it to us and then city planning just sort of checked the numbers and made sure it was correct um and so you know just with the limited resources and we're actually doing a redistricting during the regular time frame where ev mm -hmm. where everybody's doing it um we don't we're not we don't we don't want to influence you know a community map is lesser than than another map and so that's why we wanted to institute the deadline so that everybody has a chance to we can print them and we can actually right. look at them and that's we can say this community map makes these little changes like what do we think which one do we want to go with I, so, I appreciate, yeah, we I appreciate that give blanket um consideration to, that's, yeah, that's exactly what i was asking so thank you for that That's a big. If you're going to turn it in uh, the day before or up to midnight the night before, there's very little we can do and get those numbers in place by the time the board makes a decision. So the earlier, the better. Good to know. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'm going to throw another idea out there. Uh, if you do submit a map, don't be afraid to type up a little or you know write out or something uh, uh, the rationale for it. You know commentary. Um, you know, you, maybe you wouldn't have had a chance to come to a meeting here. I mean, but why not? Why not write something up and put some ideas in there? It couldn't hurt. Okay, so back to maps that we're trying to eliminate. It looks like four gets to stay. Are there any others that you want to keep for further um, further um, editing, or do we just want to do we just want to keep four of these number four of these, and then wait and see what community maps we get in, and include those for discussion? That's another alternative. I'm sorry, I'm now I was saying. It sounds like the consensus is we want to keep four scenario four. So do we want to? sort of roll with scenario four and then whatever community maps we get in we we put that in with four you know or or is there another one of these other ones that we we want to keep i'm fine with getting getting rid of all of them yes hi hi um i was looking at scenario five okay as well this, I, I yeah oh can you come to the mic please and tell us your name and um and everything Uh, my name is Kiara Watts. 
I knew that was you, Kiara. Hello. <laughs> yes, hi. Um, so um, I was late, so I kind of jumped in the middle. Um, um, this group of ladies and gentlemen over here were talking about um, negative impact to the black American community. And I think that's why you all said scenario four. Uh, we were talking about scenario five, subdistrict five specifically. Oh, okay. The gray at the bottom. Scenario four, subdistrict five. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, um, I, was, I was also um, looking at scenario five as well as one that we could keep oh, okay. for the same reason. All right, so we've got um, we've got, we've got a person that wants us to keep five. Uh, Kira, can you come back to the yeah. mic to I answer her question? For clarification, because she said I want to keep five for the same reasons that this but group was talking. No, so, oh, so that's what I was trying to get clarified. Keep five. Kier, can you restate why you'd like to keep scenario five? Just restate why you'd oh. like to keep scenario five. Um, <laughs> I was I was looking at scenario five um, in the regard of not um, causing any harm to any of the communities that are in those just those neighborhoods already okay thank you you're welcome <clears throat> one other concept that's come up uh, maybe last year or uh, last cycle but sometimes we'll have you know two basic ideas and then a cluster of sort of sub proposals off of each of those um, I don't know. Th this may not be the, the year for it because I, th I hear so much about four and five isn't very different. But I think we explored the last time around maybe two main ideas and then we had on each one small vi kind of variations. So um, I don't know. I just throw out the idea that if you happen to like one of the other ones and uh, want to just tweak that as a variation on it, you know, Tell us that too, but I don't know. It sounds like people like four, or and maybe five. <laughs> so yeah, so okay, so so right now it sounds like four is is the favorite, at least you know for the people who are here physically. Four is the favorite, and um, we'll keep in five at least for sake of conversation. We'll definitely keep in five, and then um, yeah. Oh. Can I, let me have a show of hands on, on four. Okay. Four is definitely a, a good one. And then five, let's keep five. Who, who agrees to keep five? Oh, Kiera, by yourself. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and let me go back here and see, because um, I couldn't see the chat box. I want to make sure we're not missing any commentary on the chat. But y'all can keep, keep talking. Can I ask a question? I just have a question and maybe a suggestion for you guys to think about. Um, and I understand that the city's process is going to be different than this process. But I'm thinking uh, from an equity lens, it's so hard to know by moving boundaries how that changes the, the population. So the first question is, when community maps are present, you won't just say, hey, this is out of the boundaries. We are going to discard it. You will look at the maps to see the different boundaries. I just want to make sure that people understand that. I don't, uh, sorry, I don't think I'll I... Don't. I'll say it again. Yeah. When community members that might not have access to a demographer are making suggestions, yeah. Yeah. they might not know how much that is shifting population. So if they're bringing a map and it's out of... Um, when I say out of boundaries, I mean just the population... Out of totals, balance. Out of balance. Yeah. You all won't say, oh, this map is out of balance because we check with the city. It's discarded. No, you yeah. will look at the map. There's no city. game of gotcha here. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I just wanted to name that so people won't feel discouraged if they don't have. 
<laughs> you know, I will say this. So I, uh, uh, scenario one, I'll just tell you something that I did when the data first came out on my lunch break, just to get started. And the way I did it, I actually got it wrong. I think I did my math wrong. But, you know, there is data for each precinct. Mm -hmm. So what we could, if it's not on there now, we could make that data available. That way, yes. now you have to toggle back and forth, but you could sit down, start with a map you think you kind of like, and then just take out a pen and paper, and you can kind of look on the spreadsheet and say, okay, minus 945 people. Yes. Now, what you probably are not going to be able to do on your own is figure out the racial breakdown, if that's, if that's yeah. a significant factor. Yeah. Although, actually, you could. You could. You, could, you could read out on the spreadsheet. It just, I didn't have a computer at my office, and I yeah. wanted to postpone work on something else. What was that? You didn't have a computer at your office. No, I didn't, I didn't have a program. Oh, or, gotcha. You know, the, the, the mapping program. The mapping gotcha. program. So it's actually possible. But I'm, not to go off on a tangent, you can do that um, to try to come closer. And then, you know, I think you're more likely to be accepted if you have something that doesn't require a whole lot of work and adjustment to fix those issues. But but you're right, there's no gotcha. Yeah. Because what happens when if it's if it's too far out of whack mathematically, then the demographer has to take liberties and it could no longer be yeah. your map. And so that's yeah. where you get into is yeah. this really what you were trying to convey because they have to fix it so much. And that yeah. has happened, you know. Uh, but like um, for example that's that precinct data yeah, you have it. Yeah, um, and then you can you can see exactly the population numbers yeah. that are moving, and then we could theoretically run that map because we already have the numbers, and then you can get the spit out of if you like what yeah. happened racially and income wise and everything else. You can see yeah. if you like what happened. Yeah, I und thank you for that. I know we're on a compressed time schedule as everyone is because of the census, but maybe a recommendation moving forward is just to have a work session. I mean, I get the advantage of having a demographer in my network and then also seeing the city, when you have small changes, doing that in a live session with the demographer allows you to see if you move that boundary, how it works. And I just think for community, it might be that they're not submitting maps, not because they're not concerned, but just because they don't have the tools by which to advance it other than talking about boundaries that may happen to be out of whack. So just in the future as we think about that, is there a way that people can, community can submit a boundary and the demographer will draw that map up and then they'll have it. Later, later, later. I know we don't have it now, but that might be something to consider. Well, can you, yeah. can you guys hear me? Okay. I just wanted to take this particular question because it was almost like pulling teeth to get assistance uh, mm. to do this for the Kansas City Public School District. Um, we tried or, mm. or put out the word that we needed our own software so that then we could do things. That, that was the thought process. If, mm -hmm. if we have the software, then we can do working groups mm -hmm. and it would be uh, more advantageous to the community. But that idea was squashed. So I like exactly, yes. we, we had all toyed around the idea uh, mm -hmm. about the working groups. We However, need to price the software and everything. But well, you let us know we how we need to advocate on your behalf. We need to come to the board meeting tomorrow, next time. But I mean, that's something that community no, can do for you later we, and say, how do we advocate that you have the resources that you need to empower our community to have engagement? Well, well, well that's a great question. And we would, uh, I'd like to have further conversations okay. about that because the election board is definitely undersourced. Uh, so th that's very helpful. However, that's kind of the direction we really wanted to go to, yeah. uh, is a working group. But as, as it stands now, they were barely able to get back what we asked for yeah. from the last meeting. Yeah. And then at 5 o'clock, we were plotting all those points on there ourselves yeah. Um, yeah. to ensure that we were able to have something so that you'd understand where the incumbents are, where the schools are. Of course, those that work in the district know. But everybody doesn't know where all the schools are. So that's definitely, and we will we'll definitely work together on that. 
Thank you. I have a suggestion. We can start pushing for the school district who has resources to help support and supplement that work, at least for a demographer for you, because it benefits the engagement of the people that live in the school district to be able to have engagement. This is a school district and a superintendent and a board that loves community engagement and wants to foster that. So I'm sure they will be thinking about how can they use resources to support that engagement. So let me, right. let me just throw in another little wrinkle caveat on that. Because the state has, and I know it's probably where you were going, because the state has mandated that the Board of Elections handles the redistricting process, there's just a fine line between what the actual, because trust me, the school district has the ability to make these maps yes. and plot all this stuff. No, I, I mean, mean they do. A but, to work with you but there's a fine line between where they should it's be possible. entering the process Conflict. and where it should be hands off. And that's, okay. and that's the needle that they're threading. So again, we should discuss it, but that's yeah. the reason why they're not just that's hands in it, just have them you know, because yeah. there's, there's that separation that the state legislature um, um, has, has, has basically mandated that they, that they do not influence or, or manage the process. Yeah, so and I want to clarify, line. I'm not saying manage or influence, I'm saying if you need to hire a demographer and you put out a public request for that, where can that funding come from yeah. to support the demographer being on a con con contract, working for the election board, reporting to the election board so that you can have work I'm sessions? Uh, that's all I'm saying. That, that seems like that that's a short-term contract that you guys need to have so that people can help, can draw maps and can make suggestions about maps. See, we tried you. to get it in the city contract. Yeah. That's the route that we went so that yeah. it keeps it separate. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It just didn't work. But we've yeah, asked for good. this for the last 20 years, so we'll continue yes. to ask. And I'm sympathetic to the city because they are we'll got a lot of maps. But let us know how we can help. Thank we you. have somebody over here, Dr. Lynn Wintahi, who can draw maps for you if you need some help. <laughs> Just get us that $80,000 software and we cooking with gas. <laughs> and five licenses. <laughs> That's true. The open source is definitely the ball game this, this decade. We've, we've never had this many open source softwares ever. Okay. I think we have enough information. We're gonna keep four and five. Uh, we have some notes about some tweaks to make to four. Um, and then we're gonna look for, don't forget to give us your written written testimony of what those tweaks should look like so that we can communicate that to city planning in a timely manner to, to get the updated uh, map. Before you close, I would just like to say that uh, we appreciate the work that the Kansas City Election Board does for our community. I know that this is a trying time for um, public officials working in uh, this work and I just wanted to um, publicly announce um, that on behalf of uh, the Parent Power Lab and the parents that are with us that we appreciate the work of the Kansas City Election Board and uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. If there aren't any more questions or comments, we will adjourn and give you the rest of your evening back. Please keep your maps, keep thinking about them. The email address is kcpsredistricting at kceb.org. <laughs> Please submit your comments there so that we can use that to round out a revision of four and five.